Uh, my name is Anne Muthoni Mushono. I come from Kenya, that is in East Africa. Mm -hmm. And um, today we're, we're speaking to you because uh, you are our junior professed. Yes. And will soon be taking your final vows. Yes. Um, uh, welcome and, and congratulations. Thank you. Um, how long has this process taken? When, when did you enter? I came here in uh, the year 2009, in January. Mm -hmm. So it's taken about seven years. Oh, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. Um, what, what drew you to this life? Um, first and foremost, um, it's a life of prayer. I love prayer. I come from a very strong Catholic family, especially um, mom is very prayerful and she always encourages us to, to pray. And I felt drawn to, to prayer more than anything else and I felt um, I needed to, to do it maybe in this kind of way until I found the praying sisters, the Carmelites. Can you think of any people um, that, that you lived with um, who you might consider an everyday saint, someone who just did faithful works, um, uh, you know, and, and of course has, hasn't been beatified, but they're, they're doing that saintly work of the church. Do, do you know anyone? Uh, uh, it, um, people living or yeah, or, yeah, or, or just someone who may be deceased. Okay, um, I would go for my parents, especially my mom. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And, and why so? Um, she's just an an extraordinary woman. More in most cases, we have mothers, and some of them are really outstanding. She's one of those outstanding mm -hmm. women who will stand by you, teach you the good morals encourage you along the way um, much as she she's uh, she she disciplined us very well but um, in in a loving way in a good way but with a lot of love she's just beautiful <laughs> and uh, what, what was your mom's name is your, is my, mom? my my mom's name is uh, Mary she'll be coming she should be coming oh to yes mm -hmm. oh very good mm -hmm. And, and when was the last time you saw your mother? Um, I was home last year. You were home last year? Mm -hmm. okay. September last year. September, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, um, mm -hmm. what, what do you miss about home? Um, I miss my people. Oh, as, they, as we always say, blood, blood is thicker than water. Mm -hmm. I miss my people. Mm, everything about home, you know? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, what was it like when you first got here? What, um, what, what do you remember thinking? Oh my gosh, where am I? Or what is that? Or what are they doing? Um, I was happy to have come here, but of course, we felt away from home, so far from home. Mm -hmm. But I was at home. At, I was at home here yeah. because I always longed to be in a house of prayer. Mm -hmm. So I felt at home. And Savannah, in general, is uh, people are warm, friendly. So. And um, mm -hmm. what's your, your, your life like here? How, how do you spend your time? Okay, we start, um, we can wake up as early at, as three, four, um, as early as that, but we have to be very quiet in the morning. But we usually start in the morning at around six um, with prayer, community prayer, we pray together. The office of uh, the divine office, we start it with morning prayer. We call it Lord's in the morning. After morning prayer, we have one hour of private prayer. Usually we have exposition and we spend one hour, at least one hour praying privately. Then depending with the time for mass, take an example, like I'll give you the example of this week. We start with our morning prayer, then we have that one hour of prayer, then we have mass. Mass this week is at eight. Then right af after mass, we go for breakfast. Okay, we take turns in the kitchen. Um, if I'm cook that particular day, I have to make sure that be um, before, after mass, or shortly before, before mass, I'll have prepared what is to be taken for breakfast. So right after mass, I have to go and set, set up the breakfast and serve it on time. And if I'm cook, then I'll make arrangement for what is to be taken for lunch and what is to be taken for supper. If, not, uh, if I'm not cooking, we have duties in, in um, uh, various places. 
we have we clean we clean we wash we we have chickens we have a garden we we do all those things for ourselves so uh, after breakfast we clean up we go to our particular areas that we need to be to be working until around 11 we come for midday prayer after 11 around 11 that we go for lunch after lunch we should have um, at, at least one hour rest siesta an hour of spiritual readings then we 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 start off with the afternoon duties then at 3:30 we come for evening prayer together again it takes about 20 minutes together then we have one hour again privately and after that one hour we have um, what we call the office of reading we have long readings one from the scripture and one from one of the church fathers or church the, a, a saint mm -hmm. then um, that will take us at, uh, up to around six then we go for we go for supper usually we take our meals in silence after supper we clean up in silence then we have a recreation time we go sit someplace a sitting place sitting room and just chat for about one hour just talk about anything laugh and give stories listen to stories maybe be doing some simple simple things like knitting or playing cards or something of that nature then after that we go for night prayer then we are we break for to, um, for to go to rest at around eight and we consider that um, the time for great silence um, if we have to talk, we have to be very quiet. We have to to lower our voices, and it, if we can help it, we, we don't talk until the following morning. And we we try to do things very quietly so that uh, people will have restful time without noise. Mm -hmm. And we don't answer phones after usually after seven. We don't. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. So that there's no big screen TV somewhere. Where you no, can... no, we rarely watch TV. <laughs> Not unless there's something major in the church or something. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, what's it like to know that you'll be taking your final vows? And, and what will that, how will that um, alter your, your existence? Or will it? Mm. Could you please come again? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, on August 22nd, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll be taking your final vows. Mm -hmm. um, when that occurs, mm -hmm. Um, will there be a, do you anticipate a change in your, your life or in your spirituality or is it, is, you know, is it just that stated commitment? Okay, the, um, the change, the main change will be that um, right now um, I'm kind of not in a, 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 a permanent state, but by then I'll, um, I'll be here permanently. I'll be making uh, solemn vows to to promise God and the church that I'm here to stay. I'm, I'm, I've given my life totally to God. Right now it's not total until I make my finals. And by then uh, the church will have a claim on me. A claim that I, I can't just decide one day that I'm, uh, uh, I remove the habit and go out. I can't do that, but that would be, won't be right as uh, the commitment I'm making. If I have to honor this commitment, I can't just leave. Um, it's a commitment that the church has a greater say on my life than I do. And that's why um, by, by those vows of obedience, I kind of give up my, I can't just make my own decisions. By listening to my superiors, I'm listening to what the church says. I make the vow of poverty. I can't own anything. Whatever it is, I have to, um, it has to be given to me for use, but I can't claim, even if it's uh, what I'm wearing, I can't claim that this is mine. I'll have to make a vow of chastity that, okay, um, I, I don't have, um, I'm going to remain chaste for the, la the, the, the rest of my years. So um, the, by then, as I'll, I think I'll repeat myself, the church will have a claim on me. I can't, I, I won't belong to me anymore. I'll, I'll have given my life over to the church. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. And then, Sister, mm -hmm. if, if I may, may ask, mm -hmm. um, how old were you 
when when you entered? How old were you when you you felt the call? Um, I think I was still not a teen yet, because um, this desire started before I was a teenager. I, I will say that before I was twelve or thirteen, maybe around ten. I didn't have, um, um, I didn't see them. I grew up in a very remote area back home, very interior, away from the cities and the like. I didn't see, um, apart from priest, I never saw a nun or a sister anywhere. But there was that inner urge, that inner desire that I, I want to commit my life to God in a way that, especially in prayer. And prayer was very, very much alive at home. So, and I shared this first and foremost with my mother, and she, she was um, she encouraged me or helped me to discern, yes, from a, let me call it around ten or thereabout. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, how long did it take before you you made the hard decision? Um, okay, it took. I, I joined first before I came here. I had joined a Camilla a Camilla home back home. Mm -hmm. I was around twenty five. But for some reason, I, I stepped out again. Mm -hmm. But this, um, that in a desire, that urge in me didn't stop. I would maybe want to push it away. That maybe this is not what I want to do. But it wouldn't go away. <laughs> 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 so um, I left maybe uh, when I was 27 or 28. Stayed out until I came. I came here when I was um, 39, 37, around 37. Mm -hmm when I came to the States. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Crystal, I think I've asked everything I have a curiosity for. Uh, <laughs> do, do, do you have a question? Um, mm -hmm. Anybody who may be considering this decision, mm -hmm. what would you have to say to them? Um, you want to talk to me, even though she asks. <laughs> Okay, anyone who would be considering such a, um, a decision, I would um, first and foremost urge them to, to listen to that inner voice, to pray to God, to show them exactly what he wants with, with, their, with them in their life, what would he like them to do. Because um, it's, it's, a, it's a very special vocation, though it's rare. It's rare in a way that not many, you don't find many nuns, you'll find many sisters. By that I mean not many will live an enclosed life. Apart from us going for shopping and the like, or going, going to the doctor, we rarely get out of the, these walls. We, we are home most of the times. So I would urge them to listen to the voice of God and really, um, this beauty um, answering this kind of call, but they have to first, first and foremost, be people of prayer. It's a beautiful call, and we will, um, I would maybe desire many, many people to join and be contemplatives, but they need to be people of prayer first and foremost to hear the voice of God. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. And Sister, this mm -hmm. is one of my closing questions mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. Can you think of anything you'd like to say that I didn't ask you about? <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I have anything else. Okay. I have mm -hmm. one more question. Mm -hmm. okay. This is my last question. Mm -hmm. Before, uh, it sounds like you sort of started this journey at a very young age. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see yourself doing anything else? Okay, I considered marriage, I considered all this. I considered uh, joining other, um, some other groups, marriage, and all this. I was open to anything which came my way. But every time uh, that um, desire didn't leave me that I need... Um, okay, when I was growing up, maybe in my teens, one of our, um, our neighbors joined a uh, sisterhood. She's active. She's a, a little sister of St. Francis. I went for her first profession. Much as I was drawn to that kind of life, I didn't feel this is the kind of life I, I wanted for myself. So um, along the way, as a, as a girl, I, I, um, I was open if marriage was to come my way. I was open to, for marriage, but my, that urge of being a mother, a, a wife, it didn't draw me. 
I always felt drawn to this kind of life. Good afternoon, sister. How are you? Fine, thank you, Michael. And, and thank you for, for speaking with the Southern Cross um, today. Uh, sister, could you tell me your full name and uh, uh, where you come from? Uh, my name is Esther Ihumba Chikati. I come from Kenya. Kenya. Yeah. And, and, you know, sister, here, here, uh, when you profess your vows, uh, will you take a new name? Uh, no, I'll retain my name. You retain your name? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and um, how is it, sister, that, that you, you came here to Savannah? How, how, did you, how did you end up in Savannah um, in a Carmelite monastery? What got you here? Uh, I will start by saying that I was inspired by somebody. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I think he's the one who helped me actually to know the contemplative. And that is my, my uncle, who was the first African uh, cardinal in Kenya, bishop and cardinal in Kenya. That is the late cardinal Morris Michael Otunga. Yeah. After high school at Don Bosco High School in Kenya, girls high school in Kenya, uh, run by a private, uh, it's a private school run by the Salesian Sisters. I finished my high school and then I went to volunteer to one of their homes to help with the children for one year. Then after one year I finished, I went to, as a, as to take secretary. I went to St. Gisito Secretarial College. After I finished my college, one of my young sister, who is a nun now, Sister Claire, in the Assumption Sisters of Nairobi, before she joined, she came to me and she told me, Esther, I would like you to take me somewhere. And I asked her where. And she says to me, I want to go and see the cardinal. By then he was very sick at one of the elder homes in Kenya called, called Nyumba Yawaze. So I agreed. I went with her and I heard her speaking to the cardinal. He was on his bed lying very sick, but my sister spoke to him and she was asking him, I would like to join the religious life. Uh, she finished with him and the cardinal asked me, and you sister, what would you like to do? And you Esther, what would you like to do? I said, I really don't know, because even after my high school, after my college, I didn't have the vocation in me to join, to join the religious life. Even though I had interest, I admired the way the sisters worked, because throughout my school life, I went to Catholic school. So after he asked me what I would like to do, I said, I really don't know, but I like prayer. So he gave me a small book entitled St. Teresa of Lisio, The Little Flower. And he gave my sister a book enti entitled The Love of Mary. So we came back home. Within a few months, my sister joined the Assumption Sisters of Nairobi, where she has been for the last 15 years. And after uh, maybe two years or more, I received a call. By then I had read all this book. I received a call to join a contemplative and a Carmelite order. And it was a divine call, if I can say. It was totally different. And so I start, I st because it had the address of the states. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I started communicating to the sisters here through Sister Mary Elizabeth. That's how I came to know this place. Yes. Very good. Yeah. So if I had not read that book, I don't know where I would be. But I can say my vocation came through reading that book because I was very much attracted to the life of Saint Teresa of Lisio, her way of prayer, her way of love to her sisters in the community, and her way of forgiving. It was a very simple book. 
Yeah. That, that's excellent. Mm. Um, and, and I know that, that uh, you're a contemplative order mm. um, and that you spend a great deal of time mm. in prayer. Um, then there are other tasks of, of running the, the household, if you will. Um, Sister, if you would, can, can you um, say, a, do you have a, a prayer that you really like saying and that you can say without a book? Can, can yes. You, can, you, can you pray with us, right? It's a song I always sing and I, or I can pray. It's also a Psalm, Psalm 111. Okay. I will thank the Lord with all my heart in the meeting of the just and the assembly. Greater the works of the Lord to be pondered by all who love them. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister. Um, and um, how, what do you feel as you're approaching your, your final vows? Um, you're giving yourself completely over to the church and, and to your order. Um, how, how does that make you feel inside? Uh, you know, final vows is giving yourself totally to God. And I feel I need to, to, to make more sacrifice than where I am. Because um, when God calls one, he gives the person the strength to keep going. So I really feel uh, our order, we are, the people, we are the people who pray. Because we, do, we are not active to go out and visit the sick, the prisoners or work with the children, no. So as I am approaching my final profession, I see that I really need to pray because right now there is a battle going on between God and Satan all over the world. It is a battle for people's souls. Uh, this very day, there are thousands of poor sinners who have suffered, died, and vanished like lightning. Is there no one to pray for them? Like Moses prayed for the Israelites, it is I, and I really thank God for the gift of my vocation, a call to prayer. When you are near God, there is nowhere else you can turn, and it's really beautiful to be near God. My coming from far doesn't matter. What matters is my invitation for Christ to follow in his footsteps. If you look at any tree around you, look at it carefully and see what it is that is holding this tree. There are the roots hold, holding this tree. If there are no roots, then the tree will fall. So a tree is like the church. A tree has got leaves, fruits, branches, roots. A tree is like the church, and I am like the roots holding the church with my prayers. I hold our priests with our prayers that the good Lord may shelter them under his wings as they continue to evangelize his word throughout the world. So as I am really approaching this, this uh, uh, special, special event of taking my final vows, I am determined with the grace of God to really do and pray, to really do the will of God, because that is what he's calling me to. Day and night prayer, my actions, the way I relate with my sisters. You know, we are a confined community, and community life sometimes is so challenging. So we, we, I, I have to know how to relate with others in order to keep on going, because we all have different backgrounds different personalities, different characters. I am weak, another one is also weak, so we, live, we, hold, we uplift each other in our prayers and we keep on going. Yeah. That was beautiful, that sister. Was beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> yeah, that, that was great. I, I, you've given me more than I anticipated. <laughs> uh, this has been wonderful. Um, do you have anything you'd want to say that I, I didn't ask you? Uh, I can just add by saying that as I live out my missionary spirit in our Diocese of Savannah, my presence in this community with my sisters for prayer, for formation, because even after solemn vows, formation is an ongoing process. 
and daily living will continue to be a blessing and opportunity for mutual growth through the sharing of various cultures, talents and gifts. Good afternoon, Sister. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And um, Sister, could you give me your, your full name and, and where home is? My name is Evelyn Kalondu Wambua, presently as Sister Evelyn of the Cross and Our Lady of Sorrows. Okay. And um, Sister, um, I detect an accent. <laughs> oh, sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so where did you grow up? Where's, where's your home? Uh, in Africa, Kenya. Ke in Kenya, yeah. Mm -hmm. East Africa. Yeah, and so um, what was it like to come from Africa in here? What, what was that transition like? Um, I was eager to start my vocation. So uh, when I came, I was very excited to become a Carmelite. And I missed my family. I missed my mom. I missed uh, home. But the joy was more. And um, when, when did, t tell me about growing up. Where, where'd you go to school? Um, uh, when did, did you know nuns? Did you know priests or religious? Um, how is it that you came to decide, to discern, to enter the order? How, how'd that happen? Um, after high school, there was a secular Carmelite priest of a different order from ours who was promoting vocations to Spain. And by then I wasn't interested in religious life, but I was active in the church. And I thought um, I, can, I can join religious life and go to Spain. But the first priest I met discouraged me, told me, no, Carmelite life is like being buried alive. We wouldn't want you to bury yourself alive. So he told me if I am to become a Carmelite, a contemplative, I have to join first in our country. So from there I, I discussed with him and learned more about contemplative life, about um, religious life, active life. There were nuns in my parish, Franciscan sisters, but they were not of influence to me. And there are many vocations in my parish, but they were not uh, an influence. It was something from within that drew me to consider becoming a nun. And um, how about your parents? What did your, how, how did your parents feel about you uh, becoming a nun? Uh, my mom was very happy, but um, according to our culture, a child belongs to a wider community. So I had to ask for permission from my uncles. My father died when I was young, but he was a very strong Christian. So I told mom to call them, and they are very strict people. I expl explained to them my desire to be a nun, and they advised me, they advised me, and they told me life is not tested. You don't go to try life. If you are going, you make up your mind and go. But as, as of today, they all died, so none of them lived to see me. Take your vows. Is your mother still with us? Mm -mm. No. My mother died 2013. Um, that's when I felt the pinch of leaving home. Yeah. Uh, I went to see her, and when I was to come back, even though she knew I was to come back, she cried a lot. 
She cried a lot. She couldn't eat. I knew I might not see her, but it wasn't very certain that she will pass. But she was, she was, um, she was internally happy that I went to see her, but she couldn't um, express her usual joy. Yeah. She was too sick. And um, sister, I'm trying to think how to ask this question. Um, as you approach your, your taking your final vows mm -hmm. and giving yourself over to the church and, and to this way of life, mm -hmm. um, um, how, how do you feel? How, how's that gonna? Will that change who you are? Will that change the, what you're doing, or is it just a further confirmation? Why, why take the final vows? And what happens? According to me, I don't know theology or those things, but from my own point of view, it's a it's a step that is most unusual, a step that it's not an everyday thing that people will see or hear about. It's a step that is a union, a deep union between me, my inner me, my soul, with Jesus. And we all know Jesus' is spirit. It will not be what many people will see. A lady walking up the altar and announcing a few things. It's a deeper thing. It's a deeper union. Um, if only we could walk in not not with this body but in in the faith in in deeper faith and in that spirit uh, and witness the joy of union of a soul with its creator a, a creature with its creator um, a union that it's deeper than marriage because it's not true human beings. It's not about what you see. It's about, uh, I don't know, it's difficult to put into words, but for me, uh, it's higher than anything that anybody will see that day. Uh, a family receives a bride from a different family. But this one, it will be heavens, God the Father, receiving a bride for Christ, receiving me not for myself, not me anymore, but the church. It will be not me uh, living in this house, as people see a house with several black women, but it will be the, uni the universal church, the whole, the whole Christian family living in the presence of God forever, not me. But because we are still in this body, we are not lucky. Very good. And Sister, I, I know you, you spend your days um, doing the, the work of, of this estate, um, but you also stop and pray. Um, that, that's your primary um, activity. Mm -hmm. uh, it's what, what your charism is. Do you have a particular prayer um, that you can say for us? It, it can be a psalm. It can be any prayer. It can be as simple as a Hail Mary. But what's What's one of your favorite prayers um, that you may be able to recite without even a book? Do you have one? Put you on the spot. 
I love saying our father. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel um, one with Jesus and it makes me uh, elevated before God because he taught it to us and it is him that lives in us before God. So I would say our Father. Okay, sister, if you would do that for us. We'll... Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen.